welcome to another awesome video. Hey, g activate g garage. Sure, turning on the door. Cool. In 2022, controlling a garage door opener with an internet app is not exactly big news. But what if I told you this is a 1979 Sears garage door opener, and I've not added any wires directly to the system, and I did it myself in less than a day for under $20 with no ongoing fees. Well, in this video, we're going to go over this simple project. But first, let's take a basic one minute refresher course on electricity. So here we have a very simple electric circuit. Current is flowing around the one wire through the battery through the bulb and lighting it up. Now if I hand you this pair of scissors and say to cut the wire, what do you think is going to happen when you cut the wire and break the circuit? Uh, it's the bulb's going to go out. Let's see. If I'd Oops, have to... I cut it wrong, the wrong way. Okay, try that. Alright, yes, exactly. You have broken the circuit, you've disconnected the wire, so current stops flowing and the bulb turns off. So in our house, we don't go around disconnecting and connecting wires. We use this. It's a wall switch. So let's wire that into this circuit and see what it does. It's just a lever that behind the scenes connects and disconnects those wires, leaving the light on or off. And there's a special type of switch called a momentary switch. You know what that means? For a second. Yeah, uh, just for when you're holding in the bu button. It's, it's, it's a Morse switch. code. Beep, 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 yeah, yeah. Beep. It's like the horn in your car or something. It only is on when you're pressing it on. So now think about a garage door opener. What type of switch is that? Push button. Yeah, it's that momentary switch. The only difference, instead of turning on a light, it activates a radio transmitter. That's really all a garage door opener is. And if you get that concept, then you understand this project. An even more special type of switch is this blue box here. It's a Wi-Fi switch, which is controlled not by touch, but by signals from your Wi-Fi network. You understand how that works, right? Uh, well, it's a Wi-Fi thing and has wires connected and it, and it controls the light. Yes, yes. So all we're going to do is we're going to hook that thing, instead of controlling the light bulb, we're going to hook it up to this garage door opener, and that's it. That's the project. And we're also going to hook it up to a, a, a front yard gate. Yeah, we're setting it up on our garage, then we're going to give it to a friend to control their driveway gate. It's a very versatile little computer, essentially, that acts as a switch. As you can see here, I've reprogrammed it to act uh, as a momentary switch, so it just turns on and closes those wire contacts for a second. This is a really easy project that anybody with basic hobbyist skills can do and it's kind of fun and it doesn't even take very long. But anyway, let's get started talking about this little device called a Shelly Relay. I purchased the Shelly One Relay from Amazon.com. At the time of uploading this video, it was $19.99. It's a tiny device as you can see here. I'll take it out and you can see the scale by this ruler. Now this is essentially a little computer that can be controlled and configured in a variety of ways and it's pretty amazing all that it does for $19.95 uh, and it's not even the cheapest option available. There's lots of other options. I chose the Shelly Relay because they seem to have a pretty good reputation, good reviews, good documentation and it came with a case you know some of the cheaper options didn't even have a case this has a case and nice plastic uh, screw terminal type things that you can just stick wires in it's very easy to use I found it to be a very good product and a good experience but it is a computer so the first thing we need to do is boot up the computer and we need power to do that now you have two options for power that you have to set this jumper uh, either AC current like in your house like if you're using it with light bulbs or DC, like in my case, I'm using it with a you know tiny garage door opener. So I'm gonna use the DC option and power with a power brick. And you just move this jumper uh, to one position or the other. I'm gonna move it to the DC side and then that's it. That's the only modification I had to make. Put the lid back on and then I had to find a power supply. And I ended up using a 12 volt, 200 milliamp power supply. And I think I've mentioned in other videos, if you have any sort of electronics hobby inclinations, you'll collect these things like USB chargers. You know, it's a good idea. You're throwing out a router or, a, you know, some old cordless phone, you keep the power supply. So I just had an extra one of those lying around and I was able to power this thing and it's been working for days with no problems. Once you have power, you can boot this little computer, but you've got to get it attached to your Wi-Fi network using the Shelly app. Now the app, <laughs> Let me just do a quick recap of what it was like using the app for me. So now we plugged it in, we're going to install the Shelly Cloud app. Dang it, I want to create an account. Blah, 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 bl
Downloading gigabytes worth of data. Who knows? Do, do, searching for Shelly devices. Do, 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 do. You don't have any devices. Okay, well, I, mean, I just added one. Not sure. Oh, that's a room. Maybe I'm adding rooms here. Oh, something popped up and went away. So it was a bit of a rough start, but I would just say plan on about five or 10 minutes to get used to the app. But after that, the relay clicked. I had basic functionality working and uh, it was pretty smooth. The app actually worked better after I upgraded the firmware and got everything up and going. Now the next step was to convert it from this on off switch, which is the default behavior, to be a momentary style switch. So the web interface is easy to work with. There's a way to set it to momentary. And also, in order to make it have the behavior you want for a garage door, you set an auto off timer. So you say auto off after seconds. So the effect is pressing a button for one second. And we'll go over a little bit more of the web UI in a minute when we talk about some other stuff about the switch. But the next and final step in the project is to connect it to a garage door opener. I happen to have an extra opener right here. This is the only part of the project that involves real hardware modification, but it took even less time than figuring out the software. So I just took the remote apart of course, taking out the battery so I wouldn't accidentally trigger the garage. Then I just had to find the two contacts on the back of the switch that uh, I needed to solder some wires to. Now, much like a doctor who takes an oath to first do no harm, I want to be able to use this garage door opener in the future should I decide to disconnect these wires I'm about to solder on here. So what I did in order to achieve that, I used a small connector that could be sort of folded and hidden in the empty space inside the opener. So if I ever decide to take this out of the project and return it to service as a regular opener, I can do that. Meanwhile, I just kind of route the wires out the side through a little notch and then use the other end of the connector to connect to the relay. And that's it, that's the project. This little device could be hidden anywhere in the house that's convenient, just has to be within radio range of both Wi-Fi and the garage door. It's very simple, but you can start to see some of the possibilities of having this type of Wi-Fi switch. I mean, you could use it on all sorts of things, you know, anything that could be internet enabled, even like these mini blinds you'd find it uh, at Lowe's, you know, you could have them automatically go up and down. But for the rest of the video, uh, we're just going to answer some rapid fire questions about this Shelly Relay and some of its capabilities. So let's get going with that. Will it work over the internet? Although opening a garage door may not always be safe. Yes, if you enable the cloud capability, it will work over the internet, but you can disable it easily. Will it work without an internet connection? Yes, it will. You can still connect to it locally via its IP address. Is the Shelly app always required to use the device? No, uh, I installed the Google Home connection on an iPhone that did not have the Shelly app installed and that worked too. Is voice control required to be installed? No, I just used the Google Mini in this video for special effects. Does it work if you decide to use it with wall switches and lights in your house? Does it work with an existing wall switch? Yes. So it'll read the switch as an input you can set it up like that, so it reads the switch as an input. So for example, you can control it remotely. You know, so you turn it on, stays on, turn it off, on. Very nice, very nice functionality there. Is it programmable? Yes, absolutely. There's URLs you can hit to activate the switch. It'll actually call out to URLs to let you know the status of, a, of the switch. There are tons of different options for programming this thing and more than I, I can go into here. And there's a ton of other videos and stuff available online. But anyway, those are just the basic questions I had when looking at this, but that's about it. Other than the initial bump in the road on the app, everything went really smoothly. Uh, this was an easy project and lots of fun. And that's about all. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.